my friends, I've got a story for you. I needed time to process it, but I'm ready to tell you the story that my family lovingly refers to as the tar paws. So you can see where this is going. Now, if you watched this video I posted a few weeks ago about the reality of my journey bonding with my newest guide dog, Elton John, then you know that in that video, I talked about the fact that something I have been battling with is a lot of paranoia or extreme fear that something is going to go wrong. For valid reasons, it's a part of my healing process after having to say goodbye to my last guide dog, Benix, unexpectedly after only eight months together due to an issue that arose that nobody could have foreseen. And so I have been struggling with this idea that like something is going to go wrong and I'm going to lose my dog again. So that definitely plays a massive role in how this story unfolds. It's August, 2022. Just gotten Elton John like four to maybe five weeks prior. We are fresh, we are new, okay? It is like a brand new budding romance that's still tentative. We're still taking like tipping, tiptoes in the water, okay? And I, at this time, have Epstein-Barr virus, but do not know it. Now, if you know Epstein-Barr virus or if you've had it, you know, like, you're exhausted. It is so tiring. I would at times cry from how tired I was. And after that was after doing nothing. So I was just really burnt out. I felt very, very burnt out emotionally, physically, spiritually. Thankfully at the time I had a bunch of pre-filmed videos from guide dog training. Like quite literally at this time, you guys didn't even know which dog I got. That's where we were in the guide dog upload series. So it bought me the perfect amount of time to like heal in every capacity of my life, um, or at least focus on that and be working on that every day. And so I was in Toronto at the time. This is a trip that had been booked like months before I knew I was gonna have to get a new guide dog. Had I known I was gonna have to get a new guide dog, I probably wouldn't have done it, but life happens, you roll with the punches. So I'm in Toronto, I'm staying at my parents' condo, which is in the city. Um, I grew up in the suburbs, but my parents like moved to downtown. So my parents' place is like bang smack in the middle of downtown Toronto. So I'm in the city and um, my mom is actually going away for, I think, were you away five days? I want to yes, say. Yes, five days. Um, so she was away for five days and it was just my dad, myself, and Elton John. Now, during this time, a friend of mine, Tracy, Side note, friends can be of any age. I have always had many friends older than me. And at this point in my life, I have friends that are 10 years younger than me, who I feel like, you know, I kind of take a mentorship role. And then I have friends that are 10 or 20 years older than me, who I feel like are mentors to me, or like, like a second mom or an aunt, that kind of energy. And it's always funny to me when people have this idea that like friends are strictly people your own age, I think you can have friends of any age. So this is a friend that was actually my teacher in high school and ever since I graduated has simply been a friend. We grab dinner together, we go to coffee together, and a few times I have been to her cottage. So I wanted to get together and see her while I was in Toronto because obviously I don't live in Toronto anymore so I don't get to see my friends from Toronto that often so when I am in the city I try to reach out to people. That said, I also knew I wasn't in a place to be like gallivanting around seeing everybody because as I said I was feeling very burnt out in every capacity. So she's like, look, you're feeling burnt out, why don't you come up to the cottage for a couple of days, have a little staycation, it'll literally just be you, me, and Elton, and you can just kind of chill. And I was like, I'm not gonna be really getting much work done because my mom is out of town and we run the business together. So I was gonna be doing like virtual work, but we weren't gonna be filming any content or anything like that. So I was like, you know what? Sure, let's do it. So she picks me up, I wanna say on a Friday night, we drive down, we get to the cottage, very, very, very late. And the next day, Saturday, we get up, we go for a walk. Now, they were doing road work on the road outside of her cottage, but it wasn't like the road was shut down. Like, very much so, cars were still driving, 
people were still walking on it. It was still a functional road. There was just like some guys doing some road work. We didn't think anything of it. We walked Elton John. He had a totally normal walk. He pooped, he peed, he guided. And this workman was like asking about my guide dog. And I was telling him, I was like, yeah, this is my new guide dog. We're just doing like a little training walk, giving him a little bit of exercise before like relaxing at the cottage for the day. I can't remember like what he said, but he made a comment about like, maybe he should have some shoes on or something. But I like, it didn't like click. I didn't think anything of it. Like I was just like, oh yeah, I mean, he wears boots if like the pavement is super hot and it's the summer, right? It's August. So I'm thinking maybe that's what he means. So I'm like, yeah, if the pavement is super, super hot, I put boots on him um, or like super salty in the winter, but you know, this temperature isn't bad for him. And we continue on. We go home. I take my shoes off. Tracy takes her shoes off. Elton, obviously, as I mentioned, did not have shoes on. My shoes were fine. I was wearing Crocs. Crocs are rubber. I came in, I took my shoes off. They were fine. My friend is like, oh, I got like a bunch of stuff on my shoes. This is so annoying. So she's like trying to clap it off and it's like not coming off the shoes. Should have been a red flag, was not. Then we like sit on the couch. Elton's trotting around, happy as a clam. He's playing with a toy, trotting around the living room of the cottage, I'm sitting on the couch and we are gonna make like a charcuterie board for lunch. So she brings me in like different boards that she has cause she's really crafty and artsy. So she had made this board. So she brings this board in and she's showing me this board that she had made that we were thinking of using for our charcuterie. I'm touching it and after I'm touch, after I touch it and like feel the board, cause obviously like my hands are my eyes, I'm feeling what it looks like. And I'm like, oh, there, there was something like really sticky on the board. And she's like, really? It was just like on display, like hanging on my wall. It shouldn't be sticky. And I was like, yeah, I'm gonna have to go wash my hands. I'm washing my hands, nothing is, is, is not coming off. My hands are just as sticky as they were before I washed them. So I'm like, can you get me like Dawn dish soap? Because I need like heavy duty soap because this just normal hand soap is not cutting it. So I use dish soap and I'm like really scrubbing my hands. And we like cannot think of what could have possibly been on this board that has left my hands so sticky because they were so sticky. Thankfully the Dawn dish soap does the trick. We move on about the day. We don't think much of it. We go down to the dock. We're sitting there. We have a charcuterie. We go paddle boarding we go um, uh, kayaking, like we have a whole day. We go out in tubes floating on the water. Like we have a very long day. Elton John is sitting on the dock. He's watching us. He's acting normal. It has now been hours and hours and hours since we went on that training walk. I get back onto the dock. I'm like, hey buddy, like saying hi to him. He seems like a little sleepy. And I was like, that's weird. He seems like more sleepy than he should be given like most of the day we've all been just relaxing. But I was like, maybe like sometimes when I relax, I'm actually sleepier than when I'm doing things because your body just gets in that mode. So I'm like, maybe he's just, keep in mind, I don't know him much yet. Like I don't know his behaviors. I don't know his tendencies. I don't know his baseline really. I don't know what's normal for him yet. I'm still in like the first month to six weeks of, of meeting him and getting to know him. So I don't really have a good read on what his energy is right now, what he's giving me. So I'm not thinking that much of it. We go upstairs to the cottage. We're getting dinner ready. We have dinner and I'm noticing he's like, just doesn't seem quite like himself. He had actually taken himself down to bed. Like in my bedroom where I was staying was in the basement of the cottage because on the main level was only the, the one bedroom. Like I'm like, where is he? And I find him and he's sleeping in the bedroom. And I'm like, that's really strange. So I like bring him back upstairs, eat dinner. After dinner, I'm like petting him. And I notice that he's like protective of his feet. Like he's kind of like curling them under and not letting me go near his feet, which isn't like him. He usually trusts me. And that's when I start getting suspicious and I feel his paws and they are caked. At the time, I don't click yet. They're caked in something. I start feeling, I start smelling, because I obviously can't look at them to see what it looks like. So I'm touching it, I'm smelling it, and I call my friend over. She looks, and I think at the same time, we both come to this realization and all of those other aspects start falling into place. It's tar. He has tar caked in between all of his paw pads. His front feet were the worst. 
um, one of his paws, I can't remember if it was the left or the right, like the pads were like kind of stuck together. Like he didn't have mobility of his different little feetsy weetsies, you know, little toesies. It was just like stuck. He has long hair. He has a long hair dog. This was before his first ever grooming. I did like a video on his first ever grooming. This was before he had gotten his first grooming. It was, he was actually due for his first grooming the next week I was taking him in. One of the things I get them to do when they groom him is trim his pants, his back legs, shave a little hole around the, the booty so when he poops it's clean, shave between his paw pads and trim the fur on his feet and trim his elbows because those are the areas that get a little bit unruly. So he has, needless to say, he grows really long hair between his feet, um, between his pads, and it was just caked up. And it was like kind of on the tops of the nails. It, I was in shock, in disbelief, panicking, freaking out. Now again, the road was not closed. People were driving, people were walking, and it wasn't like hot tar, obviously, or he immediately would have reacted. It was like asphalt emulsion, technically, I think is what it was called, which is essentially like tar. Yeah, I mean, you can, here's what asphalt emulsion is, but that's what it was. It's like a form of tar from what I understand. We're panicking, particularly me, because I'm like, oh my God, I don't need anything going wrong with this dog. And my friend starts calling around to different people. It is actually the, I want to say the first week of September or last week of August. So a lot of people aren't at the cottage. It's quieter on the lake. M most people who use the cottage as a summer home aren't up there because it's the last kind of weekend of summer. So a lot of people are getting ready to bring their kids back to school, getting stuff ready for work, stuff like that. Mostly the only people who were up at the cottage were people who actually live on the lake all year round. So my friend is like calling to people around the lake they're calling other people who are like on the lakes committee who might know what exactly the road works they were doing was. That's how we find out it's asphalt emulsion. Now I start Googling asphalt emulsion because I'm thinking, what if he licked his feet? Now I know him very well now. I've had him for about six months now, exactly six months actually. And so I know that he actually really does not lick. He's my first dog that doesn't ever really lick his feet. He does not really ever lick his business. It's super rare for him, especially compared to my other dogs who lick more often. Can't tell you why, it's just one of his things. So I know now he most likely hadn't been licking, but like he was laying on the dock most of the day. I was in his sight. He obviously wasn't in mine since I don't have any, but my friend could see him, but we weren't like watching him closely the whole time to know, did he lick himself a lot? So I'm like, did he ingest this? And then I'm like, okay, he's been really lethargic this evening. Is he lethargic because he's poisoned? So I am frantically Googling. It is eight o'clock at night, I wanna say at this point. Earliest is eight o'clock. Could have been a little bit later even. And we begin to start exploring the options. I find an article that is basically like, asphalt is toxic to dogs. I am now in a full-blown tizzy. I am trying to pick it out of his feet. We start looking up emergency vets. We call the nearest emergency vet, which is a two-hour drive from where we are. We are in the cottage country. We are not near a big city. The nearest emergency vet that is open is two hours away. So we're like, that's a big trip to do if it actually isn't that big of an emergency. But I am frantic. She calls her husband's brother's wife, who is a vet. She's like, look, I don't think it's an emergency, but given she's really panicked because of the trauma she's just recently gone through with her last guide dog, and given it is a service dog, not just a normal pet, like this dog has an important job, there's obviously the stakes are quite high. Maybe you should just go to the emergency vet, but I don't think it's an issue, but like, I wouldn't want to say that and something happens to somebody's service dog. So then I call my dad and I'm like, we're going to the emergency vet? Like, I'm like freaking, I'm crying hysterically. My, my dad's the type of dad who gets a little Charlie when he gets panicked. So he's like, calm down, just calm down, breathe. Like, but it's just cause he's panicked. He's like not trying to be mean or aggressive. He's just like panicked. So he's like, calm down, just breathe. I can't even understand what you're saying. Which then I'm panicking even more. And he's happens to be with my cousin who is married to a woman whose sister is a vet. So then they call her 
she's like kind of echoing the same sentiment. Like, I don't think it's an emergency, but it could be. Like, this is a pretty obscure issue. We don't really see dogs with like tar on their feet every day. So I don't think it's an emergency, but if she's really panicking. So then we're like, let's call the emergency vet. So then we call the emergency vet and they're like, we don't really know. And I'm like, well, this is great. Nobody actually seems to know, which actually isn't helpful. Like I would have liked an answer one way or the other, but mostly they're actually like, we're not sure. And so they're saying, call the hotline for like toxic dog stuff. Didn't even know this type of thing existed. You know how there's like a chemical hotline? I'm sure there's an actual name for it. But there's like a poison, poison control. You can call it poison control if like your kid ate a Tide Pod. It's like that for dogs. So I call, we're on the phone. Good to know, it's free for service dogs. So that was cool and very helpful. Uh, I think it's like $75 or $100 to talk to them if it's not a service dog. So we go through the whole thing. They read up on it and they tell me it should be totally fine. I wanna make it clear that whilst we're on all of these different phone calls and I'm literally packing my bags to leave to go to the vet, we're also attempting to get it off of his feet so that he does not have it on any longer than he needs to have it on. Now they're telling me he's most likely more lethargic than usual because he's a little uncomfortable. He's not displaying any signs of actual pain, but they're like, he's probably uncomfortable. Like his feet are stuck together and so he's probably tired from just discomfort the way humans are more tired if they have a headache or if their stomach's a bit upset like you being discomfort in discomfort or pain is tiring so we're trying everything we can we are taking scissors to cut off because he has the long fur so we're trying to cut off as much long fur with tar on it as we can get off but he's still again protective of his feet he doesn't actually want us touching them as again when you're uncomfortable with something you're like don't touch it I don't want to be in pain. Don't touch me. So he's like hiding his feet. So it's tricky. A lot's going on all at once. Both the emergency vet and, and the doggy poison control give us like different ideas, like using Dawn dish soap and using some kind of cooking oil, like a vegetable oil or an olive oil to soak the feet. So we're trimming. We're kind of using our fingers to like break it apart and we are now starting to soak them. So we bring him to the bathroom and close the door because it's all carpeted, by the way. She has all beige carpeting. So we're in the bathroom now with the tile flooring and we're literally dipping his feet in these cups of vegetable oil, wrapping them in saran wrap and sitting there with him so that he can't like lick it off or pull them off because we need it to like soak. We're sitting there with his feet up soaking for like 20 minutes. I then like take it off and black, okay? Like we're wiping these, all the oil that's coming off his feet is black. Everything we're wiping is black. We're able to start now, it's starting to like crumble. Then we're trying to dip his feet in, in water with um, Dawn dish soap on them to like scrub the stuff off. It's like almost midnight at this point. We have been doing this for hours. This was hours of time. There is like clumps of fur everywhere through the living room, just little piles of these black tar fur tufts. Elton is obviously exhausted because this is like, he has been just kind of like kicked at for hours on all four paws. And some of them had gone like almost up the leg a little bit. So we're even trimming the fur up the legs. It was a nightmare. We got off absolutely as much as we could, which was 99% of it. Thank God. So if you're ever in this situation, number one, it should not be an emergency. He was ultimately absolutely fine. And number two, go straight to the to the oil soaks and the Dawn dish soap baths. Those were the two things in conjunction with each other that completely helped this issue. Don't go to cutting initially. Just go straight to the oil soaks and the Dawn dish soap baths. It's not easy, especially with such a large dog because he's strong and if he doesn't want to do something, it's very hard to get him to do it. Ultimately, between all three methods of cutting, brushing, we also were brushing a lot. Cutting, brushing, oil soaking, and Dawn dish soap baths. We got it all off. Everything was fine. We got to sleep by like 1 a.m. <laughs> Elton slept like a log after all of that. Woke up the next day chipper and happy as ever, completely fine. Went home two days later, got him in for his grooming. They didn't even say anything about it. Like they didn't even notice. They shaved his paw pads, which did get like the kind of final remnants 
out for him, thank God, and all was well. So ultimately, it's a happy ending, but that was certainly a very stressful experience that I really wish I hadn't had to have, especially so soon in our brand new relationship when I was already dealing with so much, but that is certainly when life hands you all the lemons, isn't it? Like, universe loves to kick you when you're down and give you those, those stories. So that's the iconic family story that we refer to as Tarpaws. Oh, and by the way, I am also texting my mom throughout the whole time while she's away and genuinely can't do anything, but I am like texting her simply for emotional support. And uh, so everybody's panicked. Finally, everything worked out for the best. Everything was okay. My lovely lad is all good. And that's that. Please tell me this has happened to somebody else and I'm not alone. I really wish they had just shut down the road. Could have avoided this whole sticky, literally sticky mess. But that's that. Now you know how to deal with it if it happens to you. And if you didn't know that there's poison control for dogs, now you do. And until next time, you can click over here for another one of my guide dog story times or over here for a completely unrelated story time. Love you guys and I'll see you in the next video.